Hey everyone, wait for it, wait for it. Don't you just love that when you hear that when somebody's telling you a story and you can hardly wait because you know the plot twist is about to happen or the end of the story is about to happen. And even if you don't know what it is yet, you know it's going to be good when you hear those words. That's not what I'm talking about today. Sorry, but I just wanted uh, to share with you something that kind of irks me. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, I've got a playlist there called Daily Christian Quotes with a Twist, or Daily Bible Verses with a Twist. And I use some of those very famous Bible promises that we all know off by heart and put them into context. And sometimes when you put them into context, they're not exactly what those nice little cross-stitch signs on people's walls meant. And a really good example of this is Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and to give you hope. Jeremiah 29, 11 is smack dab in the middle of a prophetic word that Jeremiah was giving to the children of Israel who just found themselves in exile. And as you go further into that, into the chapter, God even tells them how long they're going to be there. 70 years. And if you go up further up to verse 5 and verse 7, Jeremiah tells them exactly what they should be doing while they are in exile. He's not telling them to completely block themselves off from everyone. He's not telling them to uh, just stick their head in the sand and just wait it out because there's nothing else to do. It's not like God sent them into a giant waiting room where uh, all they could do was watch CNN on some screen and just twiddle their thumbs as they waited out those 70 years. No, God gave them some really practical advice through his prophet, Jeremiah, this is what he said build a house plant a garden eat from the garden have kids marry your kids off <laughs> have grandbabies you're going to be here a while thrive take advantage of every opportunity in this place that you are at right now and give up that sense of passivity of I'm just going to sit here until things change because things will never change if you just sit there. I wrote about that in my blog this week, September the 5th, 2022. If you go to my website, katherinewalden.com, you can read it there. But here is the basic thing. Waiting in a passive, pouty way it's never going to change your circumstances. It's never going to make the waiting time speed up. Have you ever been in an airport where your plane has been delayed and you suddenly have got three hours and you're sitting there and it's the longest three hours in your life unless you brought a book with you to read, unless you have an audio book, unless you got your laptop and you, you can do some work on it. All these things are things that you can be doing in that waiting space. Or you can just be looking at the desk, at the gate, hoping that somehow magically by staring at that gate, that plane is going to come in faster than they told you the delay was going to be. So here is my thing. If you're waiting today for the promises that God has spoken to you or even the dreams of your heart and they're not happening, resist the urge to sit and pout with your arms crossed, staring at the departure gate, willing that plane to come and pick you up and take you where you need to go. Take advantage of the waiting room. As Jess Solward of Boots and Refuge Farm says a lot, make your waiting room your classroom. 
take advantage of the space that you're in to learn all the skills that you need so you can carry those when that door opens and your plane arrives for you to embark